right welcome back to the class uh, now we will talk about classification of igneous rocks uh, so earlier we looked at uh, two types of igneous rock based upon its origin uh, igneous rock which are intrusive and ex extrusive igneous rocks so we can classify igneous rock based on its origin which is uh, two different types intrusive and another one is extrusive right this is from uh, uh, solidification of magma and this is from the solidification of lava on the surface the intrusive one is where it uh, solid the magma is solidified in the interior of the body of earth another uh, classification is based on composition what does the rock uh, made up of okay based on the composition you can classify on four different types one is granitic uh, second is and Third is uh, basaltic, and fourth is ultra nephric, and uh, then there is one more basis on which you can make the classification which is called as texture based on the texture of the rock and the texture is defined as size shape and arrangement of minerals so we know that rocks are aggregate of minerals and how what is the size and shape of the mineral and how the minerals are arranged around in the rock and that is something we can use to classify the rocks in different types so based on the texture we can have six different types of igneous rocks uh, so one is porphyritic uh, second is a coarse uh, third is a fine fourth is a vesicular uh, five is uh, uh, glassy and six is uh, uh, pyroclastic uh, so this is how you can do classification classification so this is how you can classify igneous rock in different types based on its origin based on its composition and based on its uh, texture uh, so based on the origin uh, we discussed earlier intrusive and extrusive based on the composition there are four different types granitic andesitic basaltic ultramafic based on the texture uh, porphyritic coarse fine vesicular glassy pyroclastic so now uh, we will go more in detail about uh, composition and the texture so first let's do uh, the composition here this is a figure 2.3 in your textbook and this is also a smart figure here and if you look at the caption there is a link here so you can go uh, on your browser and type this web link and this will open up this video explanation of this figure so that will to, to, to have some a little bit of animation and further explanation what this uh, uh, figure is all about mm -hmm. but here I will just quickly talk about this uh, classification as I just mentioned granitic and acidic basaltic and ultramafic so these are the four different type of igneous rock based upon its composition 
so this composition, let's just talk about this now. Okay. So the first one is granitic. And this is also called as light colored igneous rock. And the reason it is light colored because of it is very rich in silica and it is also light in or lighter in density. Okay. Uh, and this can have any of these calcium. Uh, sorry uh, potassium sodium and calcium and we learned earlier in la in the last class in the in the mineral chapter that silica is the most dominant uh, one right in the those are the most dominant minerals uh, present so silica will always be there whenever any igneous rock is forming right because it is silica is the most dominant uh, mineral present in any magma Okay, so silica will be there and then silica we saw earlier that since it has a charge it would uh, ripple each other so it will add some kind of cations potassium sodium uh, calcium iron or magnesium uh, to form a new type of uh, uh, crystal uh, and depending on which type of cation or an ion, uh, cation it adds with that will give you different types of mineral crystal uh, and eventually it will give you a different kind of a rock as well. So granitic is a type of rock where you have these uh, lighter elements uh, like potassium, sodium, calcium will combine with silica uh, to give you granitic type of rock. So it is lighter in color, it is lighter in density and it also forms the continental crust. Right. Uh, so in the introduction we saw that the crust are two types uh, crust are two different types uh, one is uh, continental and another is oceanic right so we have two different type of crust on our planet earth one which makes all the continents uh, asia africa america south america uh, Europe, uh, so all of these are, are, are continents uh, which are made up of these type of granitic rock, right, which are lighter in color, lighter in density. Uh, this has a silica in dominant composition combined with potassium, sodium, and calcium in its composition. So all of this will be combined with silica in different proportion to give you different type of uh, granitic rock, okay? And remember that silica will be in dominant composition. Uh, so that will give you granitic. So and the, another type of rock which is on the other extreme is basaltic. Okay, we will just talk about andesitic in few minutes. Uh, so let's first look at uh, uh, basaltic now. Granitic. It is exact opposite of granitic. It is darker in color. It is a uh, heavier in density and this is found in oceanic crust so all the ocean beds are made up of this type of basaltic rock oceanic crust okay and the composition it will have silica plus uh, it will have iron which is a heavier element and magnesium that is also heavier uh, a, a kind of a heavy element so these uh, iron and magnesium will combine with silica to give you this uh, basaltic type of uh, uh, igneous rock then uh, so again the some of the minerals which are common so i will give you some example of the minerals which is common in granitic rock which are quartz I want you guys to remember this name uh, quartz muscovite and feldspar so these name are all given in your uh, slides as well so please make sure that you remember these name it will be in your test 
so these are the minerals which are most commonly found in this granitic rock okay so feldspar is again most common over 40 percent of granitic rocks will have feldspar in its composition okay and in the case of basaltic rock the most common minerals are uh, biotite once again i want you guys to remember these name amphibole so these are the dominant mineral group that you will find in these two different type of igneous rocks amphibole pyroxene and so in your test there may be a question that what are the dominant mineral groups present in basaltic rock and what are the dominant mineral groups uh, present in granitic rock give me two or three example of these dominant mineral in each of these rocks uh, so just make sure that you guys remember these names and what are the elements present in these different type of rocks so elements are different and these are called as minerals okay and these are called as elements uh, iron magnesium and, and the same as these potassium sodium calcium these are uh, are members of periodic tables that's why those are called as just elements and when they combine together make a chemical compound they become a mineral uh, so these are the examples okay, now let's talk about uh, the second and fourth kind which are andesitic uh, no one more thing i want to talk about here in about basaltic here in terms of basaltic uh, uh, silica is uh, not in high not in high in 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 high proportion in high so only about 40% of the weight of this igneous um, basaltic rock is made up of silica and rest 60 percent is made up of iron and magnesium on the other hand in this case of granitic rock over 70 percent of the mass is coming from the silicate mineral and uh, sorry silica and then other 30 percent is coming from these light elements sodium calcium potassium Okay, so that is again another distinction between these two uh, here in this case uh, in the light colored granitic rock silica is in very high composition uh, in very high proportion in the composition whereas in the basaltic rock silica is not in high proportion in composition okay now let's go to the next uh, which is andesitic okay andesitic is uh, another is in the middle andesitic it has a silica composition uh, more than 40 percent right uh, it has a silica more than 40 percent in composition uh, but definitely less than 70 percent so it ranges between 40 to 70 percent uh, it is uh, it is not light ne it is neither light nor dark in color it is somewhere intermediate in color and density and you will find this type of rock mostly around the volcanic eruption around the site of volcanic eruption that is where you will find uh, this type of rock and and acidic in this type of rock you will find both uh, dark minerals or heavier minerals which are iron and magnesium as well as the light colored mineral which is uh, uh, plagioclase and uh, feldspar uh, so that is how it become a, it kind of a mix of uh, light and dark color so it is somewhere in the middle uh, there's neither light nor dark in color 
and then the fourth one is ultra mafic this is very rare uh, to find and this occur deep in earth interior uh, example is a peridotite i want you guys to remember this example and this is very heavy in density in density so this is ultra mafic so these are your four type of uh, rocks this this is once again just review this figure 2.3 in your textbook uh, four type of uh, granite rock based on composition granitic andesitic basaltic ultra mafic and here this is what it is showing uh, here you can see increasing silica so silica content when it is increasing then it is means it is a granitic rock so you can see the arrow is going toward the left toward the left so as the silica content is increasing it is changing from ultra mafic basaltic and acidic all the way to granitic also it will have a lighter elements as the lighter elements like potassium sodium calcium if their concentration is increasing then again the rock is changing from basaltic and acidic and granitic all the way uh, and uh, you can look at the arrow moving in the opposite direction when the iron magnesium and calcium these are the heavier elements if their composition is increasing in the in the rock then you are going from granitic to andesitic to basaltic moving toward the right direction and also the melting temperature is higher for the heavier rock uh, and the melting temperature for the li uh, lighter rock which is granitic is much lower 650 degrees celsius so granitic rock will melt at a relatively lower temperature compared to basaltic or ultra mafic rock um, so here is uh, some of the mineral example that i said i want you guys to remember or memorize muscovite quartz potassium feldspar and plagioclase feldspar these are the different major dominant minerals you will have other minerals too but these will be the major dominant mineral present in the light color granitic um, uh, granitic or andesitic um, uh, rock uh, on in the on the, on the other uh, extreme of the spect uh, spectrum the dark color rocks these are the dominant minerals biotite amphibole pyrox pyroxene and olivine so just remember this uh, very important uh, quickly go over some of these uh, slides igneous rocks are mainly composed of silicate minerals um, silicon and oxygen and these are the min uh, elements aluminum calcium sodium potassium magnesium and iron make up about 98 percent of most magma so majority of the magma will have silicate in it about 98 percent so it's very rare to find a magma that would not have silicate present in it and then the silicate will combine with these uh, elements which are maybe lighter or heavier in density uh, to make these different type of igneous rock uh, dark silicates are rich in iron magnesium and relatively low in silica uh, olivine pyroxene amphibole biotite mica these are the example of those dominant minerals light silicates contain greater amounts of potassium sodium and calcium and are also richer in silica so the silica composition by weight will be much more in light silicate compared to dark silicate so these are the uh, example of those dominant minerals present in in light uh, light colored uh, igneous rocks quartz muscovite feldspar and feldspar among these minerals uh, uh, the feldspar is the most abundant mineral group that you will find in the light colored um, igneous rock uh, and then another way to classify is by texture uh, textures results from cooling history so this is uh, something i want to quickly go over the cooling history so texture how the texture is determined uh, so let's quickly talk about that texture so this is a shape size 
and a range map. So I want you guys to remember this definition of textures, shape, size, arrangement of minerals in a rock. Okay. So the texture is controlled by rate of cooling. Okay. So we saw earlier that igneous rocks are formed when lava or magma cools down and there will be a different rate of cooling in some in depending on in which environment it is cooling down so if it is cooling quickly or if it is cooling so slowly or instantaneously so there are three different uh, rate of cooling right so one is a slow rate of cooling another is a fast rate of cooling and then the third one is instantaneous Uh, so think about this so suppose this is your magma chamber and you have these different uh, species here and they are all here and as they are reacting with each other they are bonding right uh, so you after some time you will have these uh, different type of minerals which are present here right and this is all uh, liquid magma so for any chemical reaction to happen, make uh, you have to remember that it must be in liquid phase. As soon as the magma starts to solidify, those solid component will come out of any, would not uh, participate in chemical reaction. So for any chemical reaction to continue, to continue, there must be a liquid medium present for these ions to travel around. Right, for all of these ions to move around so and they can only float around when there is a liquid medium present uh, so then you will get these um, once these um, ions will start to uh, to react with each other you will start uh, forming these crystals in the magma chamber right and then there will be another if you have more time then now this will start to grow bigger in size right And also remember that as they are growing, their edges will start to stick or become close to each other. And then they will start to combine and even those uh, bigger minerals will become even larger in size. So their size will continue to grow as long as there is more time. So this is time as it has more time to, to cool, it, if it has not solidified yet, then it will continue to grow in size. So the rate of cooling, that is going to determine how large the crystal will be. So if there is a uh, slow rate of cooling, you have a large crystals, right? Because you have more time for all of these crystals to combine and become or grow larger in size, right? But in the case of fast cooling, if the cooling is very quick, then all of these crystals do not have enough time to combine with each other and form a larger crystal. So you will have a small crystals here in the case of fast cooling. And uh, on the, in this case, when there is an instantaneous cooling, uh, so there is almost negligible or zero time for them to, to, to combine with each other. So this will make a glassy because it is made up of silica right uh, we just saw that silica is the most dominant mineral present in in the in the magma about 98 percent of the magma will have silicate present and if there is no time for this silicate to combine with other elements like potassium sodium magnesium iron or any other elements present then it will be just silica which will be solidified itself and that will give you a glassy texture it will look like glass because um, if you actually look at any glass the composition of glass is silica so as the silica itself solidifies without combining with any other elements because the cooling is instantaneous it will form a glassy texture so this is uh, the concept of rate of cooling the effect of cooling on the texture so this is what going to control how big the minerals going to be in 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 the rock in the igneous rock which it is forming uh, so that is about it okay so now we will talk about this uh, different type 
of igneous rock based upon the size of uh, minerals present so coarse grain where you have large size minerals fine grain where you have very very small size um, size minerals once again the coarse grain are those where you have more time for cooling that allows larger crystal to form where the fine grain uh, igneous rocks or where the cooling happened very rapidly and you can't see all those minerals with your naked eyes you will need um, uh, some kind of a specialized instrument like microscope to see what type of minerals are present in this fine-grained um, uh, igneous rock another one is a uh, porphyritic which is uh, where you have two different grain sizes some of them are large size uh, crystal and on the other hand some are very small size crystal so this uh, imagine a condition where you have a, 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 a magma chamber uh, where it has it is cooling so some of uh, uh, this minerals has cooled down and and some of them are still in liquid mobile phase so you will have these uh, large size crystals uh, and then you have these uh, small size crystals so these uh, small size crystals are one that cooled very quickly and these large ones are the one that took much longer time to cool down so sometimes these magma stays in a molten state for millions of years so that's again depend on in which environment this magma is, is solidifying maybe it is traveling very slowly rising upwards very slowly and it takes about hundred thousands and millions of years for it to rise and come up to the surface and that gives a lot of time for all of these minerals to combine uh, and form uh, larger size minerals so those are porphyritic where you have two distinct grain sizes grassy as we discussed earlier uh, these are the type where the the magma will solidify very quickly it's uh, sometime during the volcanic eruption uh, the magma will just shoot out of the cone and then as soon as it is exposed in the environment it just starts to solidify it does not have enough time to combine with any other element so it will just look like a volcanic ash it's also called as volcanic ash and it is very uh, shiny and bright and it is um, uh, you know uh, just like glass it's uh, it's very shiny so you can see this example here obsidian is an example uh, the third uh, the the sixth kind is vesicular one two three four five sorry fifth kind right uh, vesicular is a type of uh, uh, volcanic rock so as the volcanic eruption is happening there is gas coming out of uh, during the volcanic eruption right so this is a uh, suppose your volcano okay. uh, so suppose this is your volcano and you have eruption happening here and uh, this uh, vesicular rocks form when this magma as it is coming out there is this gas which is trying to escape from this lava right and this lava is trying to solidify and this escaping gas will leave these holes in this rock in this lava which is trying to solidify since during volcanic eruption again based on the composition of magma sometimes it has a lot of gas millions and million tons of gas which is released and when this gas is escaping it will leave these holes in the lava so as the lava solidifies into rock the resulting rock will have lots of these uh, small and large size rocks so those kind of rocks are called as um, uh, vesicular rocks and you have again depending on the type of uh, minerals which are present with a darker in color or lighter in color it is called as pumice or scoria scoria is the darker color rock and uh, so it will have a um, heavier elements like iron and magnesium present whereas pumice is light color so it will have sodium magnesium or uh, sorry sodium calcium uh, 
and potassium will be present along with silica. So here it is a combined complete uh, classification. Uh, the columns are based on the composition, felsic, intermediate, mafic, ultra mafic. Uh, uh, and the rows are based on the texture. So you can see the texture here and the based on the composition. So you can have granite, uh, which is a uh, uh, felsic lighter in color. It is coarse grain and its counterpart, gabbro, uh, peridotite, di diorotite, diorite in these different classification based upon the composition of silica, based upon the composition of heavier elements like uh, magnesium and iron present in it. So you can see that the same type of rocks become darker in color as you go towards, as you go from felsic uh, to basaltic in color. So every texture uh, of igneous rock will have these different mineral compositions, so it will have different color of uh, igneous rock. Uh, so here on the bottom it is showing the rock color, uh, the lighter color on the left side uh, and the darker color on the right side. So it's based on the composition of the dark minerals. As the composition of these dark uh, elements, magnesium, iron, as it increases, it will continue to make the rock looks darker in color and it also increases its density. So once again, the mafic rock or the basaltic rock forms uh, the oceanic crust, the felsic rock forms the continental crust, and the intermediate rocks are found near the volcanic eruption site or the site where the volcanic eruption has occurred. So I think uh, that's all about uh, the classification of rock. So just go over the slide uh, and use your textbook. These are the different examples. Um, uh, uh, and these there are more details. Like I said, there are smart figures uh, in your textbook. So use that both uh, uh, for the type of classification based on composition and texture. Both are smart figures, figure 2.3 and figure 2.4. Uh, please refer to those uh, links and uh, that will help you get more understanding about the classification of these rocks. Uh, so uh, I will present a few more uh, videos uh, about sedimentary and igneous rock, uh, Bowen's reaction series uh, and in, in coming hours. Uh,